Just eight launches to fuel any mission to Mars. That's what SpaceX's new tanker just made possible. While NASA spends years planning one moon trip, SpaceX built a flying fuel truck that changes everything. It carries 200 tons of fuel to space in a single flight. But here's what's really crazy. Why are China's satellites secretly practicing fuel transfers right now? Two mysterious spacecraft just docked in orbit, and U.S. surveillance couldn't tell them apart. The space race everyone thought was decades away? It's happening today. This tanker isn't just another rocket. It's the key that unlocks Mars, the Moon, and everything beyond. What seemed impossible yesterday becomes routine tomorrow. Let's dive right in. Right now, at SpaceX's Starbase facility in Texas, workers are assembling something extraordinary. It looks like just another Starship. Same sleek steel body, same powerful engines, same landing capability. But inside, everything is different. This isn't carrying astronauts to space. It's not hauling satellites. It's designed for one purpose only, to be a flying fuel truck. And that single purpose is about to rewrite the rules of space exploration forever. Picture this. You're planning a road trip to another planet. You've got your car, your route, your destination. But there's one problem. No gas stations for 140 million miles. That's been the nightmare keeping NASA awake at night for decades. Every Mars mission hits the same wall. Fuel weight. A starship needs 1,500 tons of propellant to reach Mars. That's the weight of 300 cars, just in fuel. Try launching that from Earth in one shot. The rocket would be so massive it couldn't even lift off. But SpaceX found the loophole. Eight launches. That's the magic number. The first starship reaches orbit with whatever fuel it has left after fighting Earth's gravity. Then, seven tanker flights, each one carrying 200 tons of fuel, each one docking in orbit, each one transferring its precious cargo. It's like a relay race in space. Each tanker passes the fuel baton to the next stage of the journey. Simple concept. Revolutionary execution. But here's what nobody tells you about this simple solution. Those 200 tons of fuel aren't regular gasoline. They're liquid methane and liquid oxygen, chilled to temperatures that would freeze your blood in seconds. Liquid methane, minus 161 degrees Celsius. Liquid oxygen, minus 183 degrees Celsius. That's colder than the polar ice caps, colder than deep space itself. Now, transfer these ultra-cold liquids between two spacecraft while they're both screaming through space at 17,500 miles per hour. In the vacuum of space, with no room for error, one tiny mistake, one small leak, and you don't just lose the fuel, you lose everything. On Earth, rocket companies have massive ground support teams, emergency systems, backup plans, in orbit. It's just two robots dancing a deadly ballet in the void. The fuel lines must be leak-proof, thermally perfect, capable of handling incredible pressures. We're talking about precision that makes Swiss watchmaking look amateur. And if something goes wrong, there's no emergency crew, no second chances. The spacecraft are alone, 250 miles above Earth, with nowhere to run. But the real terror? The docking process itself. Picture this moment. Two 50-meter spacecraft, each weighing hundreds of tons, trying to connect in perfect alignment while traveling at orbital velocity. It's like threading a needle while riding a motorcycle, blindfolded. The tanker uses what's called a probe and drogue system. Think of it as a giant cosmic USB cable. The tanker extends a probe that must slide perfectly into the receiving spacecraft's drogue port. Sounds simple? It's not. In space, there's no air resistance to slow things down. Approach too fast? You punch right through the other spacecraft's hull. Too slow? Orbital mechanics pull you apart. The margin for error is measured in centimeters and seconds. Both spacecraft must rotate, adjust their orbits, align their docking ports with millimeter precision, all while dealing with thermal expansion and contraction. Every 90 minutes, they move in and out of Earth's shadow. Metal contracts, metal expands, Everything shifts, 
SpaceX has run thousands of simulations, but simulation and reality, they're different beasts entirely. When that first tanker attempts its maiden fuel transfer, it will be writing the manual for every future deep space mission. But here's the part that should terrify you. While SpaceX has been building their tanker system, something interesting happened in geostationary orbit. Two Chinese satellites started moving toward each other. Their names? Shijian-21 and Shijian-25. Not exactly household names. These weren't random movements. Ground-based telescopes tracked them as they performed what appeared to be a carefully choreographed approach. On June 14th, they came so close together that observers couldn't distinguish between them. What were they doing up there? The official explanation mentions satellite servicing capabilities. But servicing is just a polite way of saying fuel transfer. China wasn't testing communication satellites. They were testing the same technology SpaceX is developing. This isn't coincidence. This is competition. Both superpowers understand that whoever masters orbital refueling first gains a massive strategic advantage, not just for Mars missions, but for military satellites, space stations, and deep space exploration. The question isn't whether orbital refueling will work. The question is who will perfect it first. And that answer will determine who controls the high ground of space for the next century. But how close is SpaceX to actually pulling this off? The Starship tanker isn't just a fuel truck. It's a flying thermos bottle with rocket engines. Traditional spacecraft use basic insulation to keep their fuel cold. But the tanker needs to store cryogenic propellants for weeks, maybe months, while multiple refueling operations take place. Every hour of delay means more fuel boiling away into space. SpaceX is using multilayer insulation, the same technology that keeps the James Webb Space Telescope from freezing. Dozens of reflective layers, each thinner than human hair, create a thermal barrier that's almost perfect. Almost. But even the best insulation can't stop heat transfer completely. That's physics. So the tanker includes active cooling systems, powered by solar panels that unfold like metallic flowers once it reaches orbit. The fuel transfer system itself is a masterpiece of engineering paranoia. Multiple redundant pumps. Backup power systems. Emergency cutoff valves. If anything starts going wrong, the system is designed to fail safely rather than catastrophically. And here's the part that keeps SpaceX engineers awake at night. All of this has to work autonomously. No human pilots. No ground control making split-second decisions. Just two spacecraft following pre-programmed instructions, handling liquid explosives in the vacuum of space. What could possibly go wrong? Success here doesn't just mean Mars missions become possible. It means everything changes. Moon bases become economically viable when you can refuel lunar shuttles in orbit. Asteroid mining operations become profitable when you don't have to carry all your fuel from Earth. Deep space telescopes can stay operational for decades instead of years. But there's a darker side to this capability. Military satellites that can refuel in orbit become essentially permanent. They can't be disabled by simply waiting for them to run out of fuel. The balance of power in space warfare shifts dramatically. Commercial space stations become practical when supply missions can be refueled in orbit for extended operations. Space tourism graduates from brief orbital hops to actual interplanetary vacations. The tanker system isn't just enabling Mars colonization. It's creating the infrastructure for a true spacefaring civilization. Every science fiction dream, from rotating space habitats to interstellar generation ships, starts with this fundamental capability, moving fuel efficiently through space. SpaceX demonstrated in-flight fuel transfer during their third integrated test flight. They move propellant within a single starship. The basic concept works, but moving fuel between separate spacecraft, that's the next challenge. The timeline is aggressive. First orbital refueling demonstration is planned for next year. If successful, it opens the door for the first crewed Mars mission in the late 2020s. If it fails, well, failure isn't really an option when you're carrying explosive fuel in space. Recent satellite photos of Starbase show new pump systems being installed. More pumps than a standard Starship would need. The infrastructure is being built for higher fuel throughput. This suggests tanker operations are closer than most people realize. But here's what makes this truly historic. 
We're not just watching the development of a new rocket. We're witnessing the birth of interplanetary logistics. The moment when Mars stops being a destination and becomes a destination with a return ticket. The tanker system transforms space from a place we visit into a place we inhabit. And that transformation starts with eight simple launches that make the impossible routine. But will it actually work? Can SpaceX pull off this engineering miracle? Or will the laws of physics and the complexity of space prove too much to overcome? The answer determines the future of humanity among the stars. So there you have it. SpaceX's tanker system isn't just another rocket. It's the key that unlocks everything. Mars colonies, asteroid mining, permanent space stations, even interstellar travel. Eight launches. That's all it takes to turn science fiction into reality. But here's what really gets me excited. We're not just watching history unfold. We're living through the moment humanity becomes a multi-planetary species. The tanker system is our first real step toward the stars. And honestly, I think we're closer than anyone realizes. What do you think? Are we ready for this level of space infrastructure? Or are we moving too fast, too recklessly? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you're as fascinated by humanity's space future as I am, you know what to do. Because next week, we're diving into something even more mind-bending. China's secret space weapon that has the Pentagon worried. You won't believe what they're building up there. The space race is heating up, and we're just getting started. Stay curious, Space Corps family. NASA spent $2.7 billion on a launch tower. It's broken. SpaceX built theirs for $100 million. It catches rockets. How did this happen? While NASA took 11 years to fix one pad, SpaceX built four in three years. NASA launches cost $152 million. SpaceX targets $2 million. The White House just cut NASA's budget by 24%, the biggest cut ever. What did SpaceX discover that NASA missed? Let's dive right in. So what exactly happened? The story starts with a single decision that would cost NASA everything. Mobile Launcher 2 was supposed to be simple. A launch tower. Nothing revolutionary, just a structure to hold rockets. The price tag, $383 million. Today, that same tower costs $2.7 billion. Seven times over budget. Seven times. But here's what makes this truly devastating. NASA's own engineers warned them. Internal documents show they raised red flags about the contractor's approach from day one. They were ignored. Why? Because admitting the design was flawed meant starting over. So NASA doubled down. Again and again. $2.7 billion later, they're still doubling down. Meanwhile, SpaceX was building something impossible. A tower that catches rockets out of the sky. Price tag? $100 million. $100 million. April 20th, 2023. Starship's first test flight. The rocket exploded. The launch pad was destroyed. A massive crater appeared where solid concrete used to be. NASA critics celebrated. See? SpaceX doesn't know what they're doing. This is why we need proper government oversight. Two months later, SpaceX had done the impossible. They didn't just repair the damage. They installed a revolutionary water-cooled steel plate system. Problem solved. Forever. NASA's SLS launched once, just once. The billion-dollar mobile launcher one was scorched. Elevator doors blew out. Cameras were destroyed. Pneumatic lines burst. Six months later, NASA was still making repairs. Six months for elevator doors. Here's where the story gets brutal. NASA spent 11 years upgrading Launch Complex 39B. 11 years. For one launch pad, SpaceX built Pad B at Starbase in under three years. From empty dirt to rocket-catching tower, three years. But that's not the shocking part. The shocking part is what SpaceX is building next. Four complete Starship facilities by 2030. Each one capable of 76 launches per year. That's more launches than NASA has completed in the last decade. From a single facility. Every SLS launch costs NASA $152 million. That's today's reality. Fixed costs. Non-negotiable. 
SpaceX's target with full reusability, $2 million per Starship launch. Do the math. NASA spends more on one launch than SpaceX spends on an entire launch facility. This isn't just inefficiency. This is institutional collapse. But there's something even more damaging. NASA's approach guarantees waste. Every SLS launch destroys a $2 billion rocket. It's like burning down a skyscraper every time you want to visit the top floor. Starship? Designed for hundreds of flights, thousands of flights, the marginal cost approaches the price of fuel. That's the revolution NASA missed. The budget numbers tell the real story. NASA's 2025 budget, 